up next day and came up the south end of this canyon to the top of a, a pass, a little saddle up here. So I'll turn the camera around. I don't know what you can see, but there is a gravel road right down in this valley, probably right there. And that is a little mining camp of Galena. And we've been through there on several of my videos, but we're up on the ridge above that. And here's this ridge. It's just a really nice, almost a sharp crest, just a fine line walking across it. There's a group of students right over there. And our area that we're doing our dam design in is down in here. So this is at the upper end of the watershed that they're going to have to delineate to determine flow into their uh, into their spillway system so they have a spillway adequate enough to pass a certain amount of flow. So, you know, their tailings would not come up to this height. Uh, they would be down, you know, down in this valley somewhere and then, um, you know, based on uh, topography. So we're just here checking out because there's some key geology in these outcrops up over here and down off the slope that they need to look at <clears throat> and and determine what's going on to be able to constrain their, their dam design. So finally the rain is gone, the sun is out. The forecast is for increasing cloudies through the day but no rain. And we're still on a volcanic rock uh, porphyry, all the phenocris in there of uh, feldspar, and it's going to be butted up against the Madison limestone up here just above us. Uh, so there's the road uh, through Galena, the little mining camp, and then it turns and goes back up this valley, and in the uh, spring when I put those series of videos out with my students where we were doing the mining legacy in the Black Hills, one of the groups, we went through there and, and did some collecting uh, around that corner. So this mountain up above us is called Bear Den Mountain. So uh, I believe we're in the Deadwood Quadrangle. And if you look at that uh, topo map, you'll see Bear Den Mountain. And that's where we're at. So this is, we're probably getting, oh, between 56 and 5,800 feet, somewhere in there at the top up here. So one more pull to get to the top. Okay, almost up to the top. And this is uh, Madison Limestone uh, right through here, um, right here. So over there still. Igneous, so the contact would be right in here somewhere, and the limestone was lifted up by the intrusion of this magma that just picked everything up. And locally, it picked up pieces, you know, where it was in contact with the limestone, and it's it baked a little bit. So there are some of this, this kind of uh, looks like a marble. It's dark has a uh, marble texture, uh, pretty uh, coarse crystals. So now we're in limestone. So a little piece of igneous right there. So we're getting close, we're in that contact area. You know, it could be a, a smooth contact, could be really ragged. But it looks like more and more limestone. gulch over here is called Butcher Gulch and there's an access road in there we're thinking about one of these years maybe moving this project over there if we can find a location that would be suitable for a dam so don't worry we're not building a dam we're just doing a project to site one
Yeah, so we're all limestone up here. The porphyry is gone. So getting these roads in here were part of the, the drilling process uh, when the mining company was in here looking at uh, you know potential to actually put a repository here. And there's the mine right over there. That's the, the gilt edge mine. You can see some, some mine material, that light material up on the top of the ridge. That green slope is called the Ruby Gulch Repository. And when EPA came in and took over that old mine site as a Superfund site, then they buried all of the potentially acid generating rock in that valley, capped it. Uh, they grouted the sides. Uh, the side wall over there has been grouted. This side has been grouted. And they've got, I don't know how many dozens of monitoring wells in that thing and they're monitoring water quality at the base, uh, the outflow, and again in one of the videos that I did with my students looking at mine legacy, uh, we sampled in the creek coming right out of the base of the repository. That's the repository up above. That building up there is the water treatment facility that they still process uh, water uh, through the reclamation process. So that is ongoing and uh, you know that was an operating gold mine until well, I think it was the fall of 97 when Jeanette and I moved back to South Dakota and started teaching at the School of Mines. And this was just going through the, the foreclosure. Well, it was more than that. The company just up and left. And uh, so it got stuck with the state and then the EPA came in. So you could go look up, uh, you know, Gilt Edge Mine, Brome Mining, and in the literature and probably find all kinds of information on that. Okay, that peak over there, Custer Peak. It's one of the higher points in the northern Black Hills. Um, Terry Peak and whatnot is over that ridge. Can't see it from here. You might when you get up to the top up here. So this is the valley that we're looking to put the dam in right down in front of us. This is Lost Gulch. Uh, this is Bear Den Mountain. And then Butcher Gulch uh, over here. All right, up to the top. Getting to the top of Bear Den Mountain. Man, look out out there in the prairie. There's Bear Butte. So, great view up here. <clears throat> so, Bear Butte Sturgis is right down in front. Then we came up this valley up in front of us. Terry Peak is right behind that ridge, can't see it. Yeah, I already got Crow Peak down below. Or Crow, yes, that's Custer, yeah. So Crow Peak is right there. That bump over there, that's where Spearfish is see the prairie real good today. Oh, there's the castle, Crassel Rock, straight out. So I'm walking on one of those roads that were built. This one's right below the base of Bear Den Mountain. Bear Den's up behind me up here. You can see the, the top of the ridge. And so this is down probably about 60 or 80 feet in elevation. I'm just walking down through the length of the road. So this hillside is actually quite accessible. There's two or three of these type of access roads that have been cut through here. Uh, this one's probably the best shape. And then there's two or three more down there uh, in, the, in the trees and in the thickets. Yesterday when 
yesterday when it was on that uh, contact of the Madison and the porphyry, uh, that little fault, that was right over, you can see that road going up the side hill and right up the corner up there is where those little pits were. And then all of the rock up above, the high rock down there, that's all the igneous uh, porphyry as well. So a lot of intruded rock in here uh, has picked up and, and all of the Paleozoic rock, the sediments that were on top of it, have been lifted up and they're already weathered and gone out of here. Except for this little slice of uh, Madison limestone that's up on the ridge uh, on Bear Den. If you can see just to the right of this first ridge, right back in there somewhere, there's some really tan looking rock. It's in the clouds right now. That is the wharf mine at the base of Terry Peak. And that's the only active gold mine in the Black Hills. Again, I've had uh, a video uh, of that uh, mine last summer, if you want to look that up. This very, very steep ridge in here. This is really steep stuff. You can see all the downed trees in there. I think there's a, another road right down inside the trees right there. But to try to go down these slopes and get to it, you have to have a younger pair of ankles than I do. We're still on the porphyry here. 